Verses 1 to 38 of The Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 1 to 38. Anonymous old French epic dating perhaps as early as the middle eleventh century. Charles the King, our Lord and Sovereign, full seven years hath sojourned in Spain, conquered the land and won the western main. Now no fortress against him doth remain, no city walls are left for him to gain, save Saragus that sits on high mountain, Masil its king, who feareth not God's name, Mahomet's man, he invokes Apollon's aid, nor wards off ills that shall to him attain. King Marsilies he lay at Saragus, went he his way into an orchard cool. There on a throne he sate, of marble blue. Round him his men, full twenty thousand stood. Called he forth then his counts, also his dukes. My lords, give ear to our impending doom, that Emperor Charles of France the Deuce into this land is come, us to confuse. I have no host in battle him to prove, nor have I strength his forces to undo. Counsel me, then, ye that are wise and true, can ye ward off this present death and duel? What were to say no pagan of them knew, save Blancondrin of the castle of Valfound? Blancondrin was a pagan very wise, in vassalage he was a gallant knight. First in prowess he stood his lord beside, and thus he spoke. Do not yourself affright, yield to Kalun, that is so big with pride. Faithful service, his friend and his ally. Lions and bears and hounds for him provide. Thousand mewed hawks, seven hundred camelry. Silver and gold, four hundred mules load high. Fifty wagons, his rights will need supply, To with that wealth he pays his soldiery. War hath he waged in Spain too long a time, To Aix in France, homeward he will him hie. Follow him there before St. Michael's tide, You shall receive and hold the Christian right. Stand honour bound and do him fealty, Send hostages should he demand surety, Ten or a score our loyal oath to bind. Send him our sons, the firstborn of our wives, And he be slain, I'll surely furnish mine. Better by far they go, though doomed to die, Than that we lose honour and dignity, And be ourselves brought down to beggary. Says Blancondrines, By my right hand I say, And by this beard that in the wind doth sway, The Frankish host you'll see them all away. Franks will retire to France, their own terrain. When they are gone, to each his fair domain. In his chapelle at Aix will Charles stay. High festival will hold for St. Michael. Time will go by and pass the appointed day. Tidings of us no Frank will hear or say. Proud is that king, and cruel his courage. From the hostage he'll slice their heads away. Better by far their heads be shorn away than that ourselves lose this clear land of Spain, than that ourselves do suffer grief and pain. That is well said, so be it, the pagans say. The council ends, and that King Marsili calleth aside Clarun of Balegi, Astramarin and Eudropin his peer, and Priamun and Gualun of the beard, and Machina and his uncle Mahi, with Jonah, Malbian from oversea, and Blancondrin, good reason to decree. Ten hath he called, were first in felony. Gentle barons, to Charlemagne go ye, he is in siege of Cordris the city. In your right hands bear olive branches green, which signify peace and humility. If you by craft contrive to set me free, silver and gold you'll have your fill of me. Manners and fiefs, I'll give you all your need. We have enough, the pagans straight agree. 
King Masilis, his counsel finishing, says to his men, Go now, my lords, to him, olive branches in your right hands bearing. Bid ye for me that shall amain the king, in his God's name to show me his mercy. Ere this new moon wanes, I shall be with him. One thousand men shall be my following. I will receive the right of christening, will be his man, my love and faith swearing. Hostages too he'll have, if so he will. Says Blancondrines, much good will come of this. Ten snow-white mules then ordered Masili, gifts of a king, the king of Swatili, bridled with gold, saddled in silver clear, mounted them those that should the message speak. In their right hands were olive branches green. Came they to Charles, that holds all France in fee, yet cannot guard himself from treachery. Merry and bold is now that emperor, cordres he holds, the walls are tumbled down. His catapults have battered town and tower. Great good treasure his knights have placed in pound, silver and gold and many a jewelled gown. In that city there is no pagan now, but he been slain or takes the Christian vow. The emperor is in a great orchard ground, where Oliver and Roland stand around. Sanson the duke and Anse the proud, Geoffrey d'Anjou that bears his gonfalon. There too Gerin and Gerier are found. Where they are found is seen a mighty crowd. Fifteen thousand come out of France the deuce. On white carpets those knights have sate them down, at the game-boards to pass an idle hour. Checkers the old, for wisdom most renowned, while fence the young and lusty bachelors. Beneath a pine in Eglantine embowed stands a fold-stool fashioned of gold throughout. There sits the king, that holds douce France in power. White is his beard, and blossoming white his crown. Shapely his limbs, his countenance is proud. Should any seek, no need to point him out. The messengers, on foot they get them down, and in salute, full courteously they lout. The foremost word of all Blancondrine spake, and to the king, May God preserve you safe, the all-glorious to whom ye are bound to pray. Proud Marsilies, this message bids me say, Much hath he sought to find salvation's way. Out of his wealth meet presents would he make, Lions and bears and greyhounds leashed on chain, Thousand mewed hawks, seven hundred dromedaries, Four hundred mules his silver shall convey. Fifty wagons you'll need to bear away, Golden besants, such store of proved assay, Where with full tale your soldiers you can pay. Now in this land you've been too long a day, Hie you to France, return again to Aix. Thus saith my lord, he'll follow too that way. That emperor towards God his arms he raised, Lowered his head, began to meditate. That emperor inclined his head full low. Hasty in speech he never was, but slow. His custom was, at his leisure he spoke. When he looks up, his face is very bold. He says to them, Good tidings have you told. King Marsilis hath ever been my foe. These very words you have before me told. In what measure of faith am I to hold? That Sarazin says, Hostages he'll show. Ten shall you take, or fifteen or a score. Though he be slain, a son of mine shall go. Any there be, you'll have more nobly borne. To your palace, signorial, when you go. At Michael's feast, called in periculo, My lord hath said, thither will he follow, Even to your baths, that God for you hath wrought. There is he fain the Christian faith to know. Answers him Charles, Still may he heal his soul. Clear shone the sun in a fair eventide. Those ten men's mules in stall he bade them tie. Also a tent in the orchard raise on high. Those messengers had lodging for the night. Dozen sergeants served after them aright. 
Darkling they lie till comes the clear daylight. That emperor does with the morning rise. Matins and mass are said then in his sight. Forth goes that king, and stays beneath a pine. Barons he calls, good counsel to define. For with his franks he's ever of a mind. That emperor beneath a pine he sits, Calls his barons his counsel to begin. Oger the duke, that archbishop Turpin, Richard the old, and his nephew Henry, From Gascony the proof Count Acolin, Tedbold of Reims and Milun his cousin. With him there were Geras and also Gerin, And among them the Count Roland came in, And Oliver, so proof and so gentle. Franks out of France, a thousand chivalry, Guaines came there, that wrought the treachery. The council then began, which ended ill. My lord's barons, says the emperor then, Charles, King Marsilies hath sent me his messages. Out of his wealth he'll give me weighty masses, Greyhounds on leash, and bears and lions also, Thousand mewed hawks, and seven hundred camels, Four hundred mules with gold Arabian charged, Fifty wagons, yea, more than fifty drawing. But into France demands he my departure. He'll follow me to Aix, where is my castle. There he'll receive the law of our salvation. Christian he'll be, and hold from me his marches. But I know not what purpose in his heart is. Then say the Franks, Beseems us act with caution. That emperor hath ended now his speech. The Count Rolands he never will agree. Quick to reply, he springs upon his feet, and to the king. Believe not, Marsili, seven years since, when into Spain came we, I conquered you nobles, also Comibles, and took Valterne, and all the land of Pine, and Balaguet, and Tuel, and Cezilie. Traitor in all his ways was Marsili. Of his pagans he sent you then fifteen, Bearing in hand their olive branches green, Who even as now these very words did speak. You of your franks a council did decree, Praise they that your words that foolish were indeed. Two of your counts did to the pagan speed, Besan was one and the other Basili, Their heads he took on the hill by Haltili. War have you waged, so on to war proceed, To Saragus lead forth your great army. All your life long, if need be, lie in siege, Vengeance for those the felon slew to wreak. That emperor he sits with lowering front, He clasps his chin, his beard his fingers tug, Good word nor bad, his nephew not one. Franks hold their peace, but only Guanolun Springs to his feet, and comes before Kalun. Right haughtily his reason he's begun, and to the king. Believe not any one, my word, nor theirs, save whence your good shall come. Since he sends word, that king Marsilion, homage he'll do by finger and by thumb. Throughout all Spain your writ alone shall run, next he'll receive our rule of Christendom. Who shall advise this bidding be not done, deserves not death, since all to death must come. Counsel of pride is wrong. We've fought enough. Leave we the fools, and with the wise be one. And after him came Nimes out, the third. Better vassal there was not in the world, and to the king. Now rightly have you heard, Gawain the count, what answer he returned. Wisdom was there, but let it well be heard. King Marsilies in war is overturned, His castles all in ruin have you hurled, With catapults his ramparts have you burst, Vanquished his men, and all his cities burned, Him who entreats your pity do not spurn, Sinners were they that would to war return, With hostages his faith he would secure, Let this great war no longer now endure. Well said the duke, Franks utter in their turn, my lord's baron, say whom shall we send up, To Saragoose, to King Marsilion? Answers Duke Nimes, I'll go there for your love, Give me therefore the wand, also the glove. 
answers the king, Old man of wisdom, prof, by this white beard, and as these cheeks are rough, you'll not this year so far from me remove. Go sit you down, for none hath called you up. My lord's barons, say whom now can we send to the Saracen that Saragoose defends? Answers Rollanz, I might go very well. Certes you'll not, says Oliver, his friend, for your courage is fierce unto the end. I am afraid you would misapprehend. If the king wills it, I might go there well. Answers the king, Be silent both on bench. Your feet nor his, I say, shall that way wend. Nay, by this beard that you have seen grow blench, the dozen peers by that would stand condemned. Franks hold their peace, you'd seen them all silent. Turpins of Reigns is risen from his rank, says to the king, In peace now leave your Franks. For seven years you've lingered in this land. They have endured much pain and sufferance. Give, sire, to me the clove, also the wand. I will seek out the Spanish Sarazand, for I believe his thoughts I understand. The emperor answers intolerant. Go sit you down on yonder silken mat, and speak no more until that I command. Franks chevaliers, says the emperor then, Charles, choose ye me out a baron from my marches, to Marsili shall carry back my answer. Then says Rollanz, there's Gawain's my good father. Answer the Franks. For he can wisely manage, so let him go. There's none you should send rather. And that Count Gawain's is very full of anguish. Off from his neck he flings the pelts of Martin, and on his feet stands clear in silken garment. Proud face he had, his eyes with colour sparkled. Fine limbs he had, his ribs were broadly arched. So fair he seemed that all the court regarded. Says to Rolant, Fool, wherefore art so wrathful? All men know well that I am thy good father. Thou hast decreed to Massilion I travel. Then if God grant that I return hereafter, I'll follow thee with such a force of passion that will endure so long as life may last thee. Answers Rolant, Thou art full of pride and madness, all men know well, I take no thought for slander. But some wise man surely should bear the answer. If the king will, I'm ready to go rather. Answers him Gawain, Thou shalt not go for me. Thou art not my man, nor am I lord of thee. Charles commands that I do his decree, To Saragoose going to Massilie. There I will work a little trickery. This mighty wrath of mine are thus let free. When Rolands heard, began to laugh for glee. When Gawain sees that Roland laughs at it, such grief he has, for rage he's like to split. A little more, and he has lost his wit. Says to that count, I love you not a bit. A false judgment you bore me when you chid. Right, Emperor, you see me where you sit. I will your word accomplish. As you bid. To Saragoose I must repair, tis plain, Whence who goes there returns no more again. Your sister's hand in marriage have I ta'en, And I've a son, there is no prettier swain. Baldwin, men say he shows the knightly strain, To him I leave my honours and domain. Care well for him, he'll look for me in vain. Answers him Charles, your heart is too humane. When I command, time is to start a main. Then says the king, Gawain's before me stand, And take from me the glove, also the wand, For you have heard you're chosen by the Franks. Sire, answers Gawain's, all this is from Rollanz. I'll not love him so long as I'm a man, Nor Oliver who goes at his right hand. The dozen peers, for they are of his band, All I defy, as in your sight I stand. Then says the king, Over intolerant, now certainly you go when I command. And go I can, yet have I no warrant, Basile had none, nor his brother Basant. 
his right-hand glove that emperor holds out, but the Count Gawain's elsewhere would fain be found. When he should take, it falls upon the ground. Murmur the Franks, God, what may that mean now? By this message great loss shall come about. Lordings, says Gawain, you'll soon have news enow. Now, Gawain said, give me your order, sire, since I must go, why need I linger, I? Then said the king, In Yeasi's name and mine, With his right hand he has absolved and signed, Then to his care the wand and brief confides. Gawain's the count goes to his hostelry, Finds for the road his garments and his gear, All of the best he takes that may appear, Spurs of fine gold he fastens on his feet, and to his side murgles his sword of steel. On Tach Brun his charger next he leaps. His uncle holds the stirrup, Grinamir. Then you had seen so many knights to weep, who all exclaim, Unlucky lord indeed! In the king's court these many years you've been. Noble vassal, they say that you have seen. He that for you this journey has decreed, King Charlemagne will never hold him dear. The Count Rolant, he should not so have deemed, Knowing you were born of very noble breed. After, they say, us too, sire, shall he lead. Then answers Gawains, not so the Lord be pleased, Far better one than many knights should bleed. To France the dutes, my lords, you soon shall speed. On my behalf my gentle wife you'll greet, And Pinabel, who is my friend and peer, And Baldwin, my son, whom you have seen, his rights accord, and help him in his need. Rides down the road, and on his way goes he. Gawain's canters on, and halts beneath a tree, Where Sarazins assembled he may see, With Blancondrines who abides his company. Cunning and keen they speak then, each to each. Says Blancondrines, Charles, what a man is he, Who conquered Puil and the whole of Calabri, into England he crossed the bitter sea, to the holy Pope restored again his fee. What seeks he now of us in our country? Then answers Gawain, So great courage hath he, Never was man against him might succeed. Says Blancondrines, Gentle the Franks are found, Yet a great wrong these dukes do and these counts, Unto their lord being in council proud. Him and themselves they harry and confound. Gawain's replies, There is none such without, Only Roland's whom shame will yet find out. Once in the shade the king had sate him down, His nephew came in sark of iron brown, Spoils had he won, beyond by Carcassonne, Held in his hand an apple red and round. Behold, fair sire, said Roland's as he bowed, Of all earth's kings I bring you here the crowns. His cruel pride must shortly him confound, Each day towards death he goes a little down, When he be slain, shall peace once more abound. Says Blancondrines, A cruel man, Roland, that would bring down to bondage every man, And challenges the peace of every land. With what people takes he this task in hand? And answers Gawain, The people of the Franks, they love him so, for men he'll never want. Silver and gold he showers upon his band, Charges and mules, garments and silken mats. The king himself holds all by his command. From hence to the east he'll conquer sea and land. Cantered so far then Blancondrines and Gawain, Till each by each a covenant had made, And sought a plan how Roland might be slain. Cantered so far by valley and by plain, To Saragoose beneath a cliff they came. There a foldstool stood in a pine-tree's shade, Enveloped all in Alexandrine veils. There was the king that held the whole of a Spain, Twenty thousand of Saracens his train. Nor was there one but did his speech contain, Eager for news till they might hear the tale, Haste into sight, then Blancondrines and Gawain. Blancondrin comes before Massilion, holding the hand of County Gwenolun, says to the king, Lord save you, sire Mahum, and Apollon, whose holy laws here run. Your message we delivered to Shalun, 
both his two hands he raised against the sun, praising his God, but answer made he none. He sends you here his noblest born baron, greatest in wealth that out of France is come. From him you'll hear if peace shall be or none. Speak, said Marcille, we'll hear him every one. But the Count Gawains did deeply meditate, cunning and keen, began at length and spake, even as one that knoweth well the way. And to the king, May God preserve you safe, the all-glorious to whom we're bound to pray. Proud Charlemagne, this message bids me say, You must receive the holy Christian faith, and yield in fee one half the lands of Spain. If to accord this tribute you disdain, taken by force and bound in iron chain, you will be brought before his throne at X. Judged and condemned you'll be, and shortly slain. Yes, you will die in misery and shame. King Marsilis was very sore afraid, snatching a dart with golden feathers gay. He made to strike. They turned aside his aim. King Marsilis is turned white with rage, his feathered dart he brandishes and shakes. Gawains beholds, his sword in hand he takes, two fingers width from scabbard bears the blade, and says to it, O clear and fair and brave, before this king in court will so behave, that the emperor of France shall never say, In a strange land I'd thrown my life away, before these chiefs thy temper had assayed. Let us prevent this fight, the pagans say. Then Sarazins implored him so, the chiefs, on the fold-stool, Marsilis took his seat. Greatly you harm our cause, says the Al-Khalif, when on this frank your vengeance you would wreak. Rather you should listen to hear him speak. Sire, Gawain says, to suffer I am meek. I will not fail, for all the gold God keeps. Nay, should this land its treasure pile in heaps, but I will tell, so long as I be free. What Charlemagne, that royal majesty, bids me inform his mortal enemy. Gawain's had on a cloak of sable skin, and over it a veil alexandrine. These he throws down, they're held by Blancondrine, but not his sword, he'll not leave hold of it. In his right hand he grafts the golden hilt. The pagans say, A noble baron this! Before the king's face, Gawain's drawing near, says to him, Sire, wherefore this rage and fear? Seeing you are, by Charles, of Franks the chief, bidden to hold the Christian's right belief. One half of Spain he'll render as your fief, the rest Rollands his nephew shall receive. Proud parsoner in him you'll have indeed. If you will not to Charles this tribute cede, to you he'll come and Saragoose besiege take you by force, and bind you hands and feet, bear you outright, even unto X his seat. You will not then on palfrey nor on steed, jennet nor mule, come cantering in your speed. Flung you will be on a vile sumpter beast, tried there and judged, your head you will not keep. Our emperor has sent you here this brief. He's given it into the pagan's neef. Now Marsilis is turned white with ire. He breaks the seal and casts the wax aside, looks in the brief, sees what the king did write. Charles commands who holds all France by might. I bear in mind his bitter grief and ire. Tis of Bassan and his brother Basili, whose heads I took on the hill by Haltilly. If I would save my body now alive, I must dispatch my uncle the Alkalife. Charles will not love me ever otherwise. After there speaks his son to Marsili, says to the king, In madness spoke this wight, so wrong he was to spare him were not right. Leave him to me, I will that wrong requite. When Gawain's hears, he draws his sword outright, against the trunk he stands beneath that pine. The king is gone into that orchard then, with him he takes the best among his men, and Blancondrines there shows his snowy hair, and Gersolet was the king's son and heir. And the Al-Khalif, his uncle and his friend, 
says Blancondrines, summon the Frank again. In our service his faith to me he's pledged. Then says the king, so let him now be fetched. He's taken Gawain's by his right finger ends, and through the orchard straight to the king they wend. Of treason there make lawless parliament. End of verses 1 to 38「39 to 87 of the Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 39 to 87. Fair Master Gawains, says then King Marsili, I did you now a little trickery. Making to strike, I showed my great fury. These sable skins take as amends from me. Five hundred pounds would not their worth redeem. Tomorrow night the gift shall ready be. Gawain answers him, I'll not refuse it me. May God be pleased to show you his mercy. Then says Marsil, Gawain's the truth to ken. Minded I am to love you very well. Of Charlemagne I wish to hear you tell. He's very old, his time is nearly spent. Two hundred years he's lived now, as tis said. Through many lands his armies he has led. So many blows his buckled shield has shed, And so rich kings he's brought to beg their bread. What time from war will he draw back instead? And answers Gawain's, Not so was Charles bred. There is no man that sees and knows him well, But will proclaim the emperor's hardy head. Praise him as best I may, when all is said, Remain untold, honour and goodness yet. His great valour, how can it be counted? Him with such grace hath God illumined. Better to die than leave his banneret. The pagan says, You make me marvel sore At Charlemagne who is so old and hoar. Two hundred years, they say, he's lived and more. So many lands he's led his armies o'er, So many blows from spears and lances borne, And so rich kings brought down to beg and sawn. When will time come that he draws back from war? Never, says Gawains, so long as lives his nephew. No such vassal goes neath the dome of heaven, and proof also is Oliver, his henchman. The dozen peers whom Charles holds so precious, these are his guards with other thousands twenty. Charles is secure, he holds no man in terror. Says Sarazin, My wonder yet is grand, at Charlemagne, who hoary is and blanched. Two hundred years and more, I understand, he has gone forth and conquered many a land. Such blows hath borne from many a trenchant lance, vanquished and slain of kings so rich a band. When will time come that he from war draws back? Never, says Gawain, so long as lives Rollanz. From hence to the east there is no such vassal, and proof also Oliver his comrade, the dozen peers he cherishes at hand. These are his guard, with twenty thousand francs. Charles is secure, he fears no living man. Fair Master Gawains, says Marsilies the king, such men are mine, fairer than tongue can sing. Of knights I can four hundred thousand bring, so I may fight with Franks and with their king. Answers him Gawains, not on this journeying, save of pagans, a great loss suffering. Leave you the fools, wise counsel following. To the emperor such wealth of treasure give, that every frank at once is marvelling. For twenty men that you shall now send in, to France the deuce he will repair that king. In the rearward will follow after him both his nephew, Count Rolant, as I think, and Oliver, that courteous paladin. Dead are the counts, believe me if you will. Charles will behold his great pride perishing. For battle then he'll have no more the skill. Fair Master Gawain, says then King Marsili, 
show the device how Roland slain may be. Answers him Gawains, that will I soon make clear. The king will cross by the good pass of seas, a guard he'll set behind him in the rear. His nephew there, Count Roland, that rich peer, and Oliver, in whom he well believes. Twenty thousand francs in their company, five score thousand pagans upon them lead. Franks unawares in battle you shall meet. Bruised and bled white the race of Franks shall be. I do not say, but yours shall also bleed. Battle again deliver and with speed. So, first or last, from Roland you'll be freed. You will have wrought a high chivalrous deed, nor all your life no war again, but peace. Could one achieve that Roland's life was lost, Charles' right arm were from his body torn. Though there remained his marvellous great host, he'd not again assemble in such force. Terror major would languish in repose. Marcille has heard, he's kissed him on the throat. Next he begins to undo his treasure store. Said Marsili, but now what more, said they? No faith in words, by oath unbound I lay, Swear me the death of Roland on that day. Then answered Gawain, So be it, as you say. On the relics are in his sword murgles, Treason he sworn, forsworn his faith away. Was a fold still there, made of oliphant, A book thereon Marsilies bade them plant, In it their laws, Mahams and Tervagants. He sworn thereby the Spanish Sarazand, in the rearward if he shall find Roland, battle to himself and all his band, and verily he'll slay him if he can. And answered Gawains, So be it, as you command. In haste there came a pagan, Valdebrun. Warden had been to King Marsilion. Smiling and clear he said to Guenelun, Take now this sword, and better sword has none. Into the hilt a thousand coins are run, to you, fair sir, I offer it in love. Give us your aid from Roland the Baron, that in rearward against him we may come. Gawain's the count answers, It shall be done. Then, cheek and chin, kissed each the other one. After there came a pagan Climorins, smiling and clear to Gwenolyn begins, Take now my helm, better is none than this, but give us aid on Roland the Marquis, by what device we may dishonour bring. It shall be done, Count Gawain's answered him, on mouth and cheek then each the other kissed. In haste there came the queen forth Brimimond, I love you well, sir, said she to the count, for prize you dear, my lord, and all around. Here for your wife I have two brooches found, amethysts and jacinths in golden mount. More worth are they than all the wealth of Rome, your emperor has none such, I'll be bound. He's taken them, and in his hosen pouched. The king now calls Maldoriz, that guards his treasure. Tribute for child, say, is it now made ready. He answers him, Ay, sire, for here is plenty. Silver and gold on hundred camels seven, and twenty men the gentlest under heaven. Marsili's arm, Gawain's shoulder doth enfold. He said to him, You are both wise and bold. Now, by the law that you most sacred hold, let not your heart in our behalf grow cold. Out of my store I'll give you wealth untold, charging ten mules with fine Arabian gold. I'll do the same for you, new year and old. Take then the keys of this city so large, this great tribute present you first to Charles. Then get me placed Roland's in the rearward. If him I find in valley or in pass, Battle I'll give him, that shall be the last. Answers him Gawain's, My time is nearly past. His charger mounts, and on his journey starts. The emperor draws near to his domain. He has come down unto the city Gelnay. The Count Roland has broken it and ta'en. An hundred years its ruins shall remain. Of Gwenolyn the king for news is fain, And for tribute from the great land of Spain. At dawn of day, just as the light grows plain, Into their camp is come the county Gawain. In morning time is risen the emperor, 
Matins and mass he's heard and made his prayer. On the green grass before the tent his chair, Where Rolant stood and that bold Oliver, Nimes the duke and many others there, Guwain's arrived, the felon perjurer, Begins to speak with very cunning air, Says to the king, God keep you, sire, I swear, Of Saragus the keys to you I bear, Tribute I bring you, very great and rare, And twenty men, look after them with care. Proud Marsilies bade me this word declare, That al Khalif, his uncle, you must spare. My own eyes saw four hundred thousand there, In hauberks dressed, closed helms that gleamed in the air, And golden hilts upon their swords they bear. They followed him, right to the sea they'll fare. Marsil they left, that would their faith forswear, For Christendom they've neither wish nor care. But the fourth league they had not compassed ere, Break from the north tempest and storm in the air. Then were they drowned, they will no more appear. Were he alive, I should have brought him here. The pagan king in truth, sire, bids you hear. Ere you have seen one month pass of this year, He'll follow you to France, to your empire. He will accept the laws you hold and fear. Joining his hands will do you homage there. Kingdom of Spain will hold as you declare. Then says the king, now God be praised, I swear. Well have you wrought, and rich reward shall wear. Bids through the host a thousand trumpets blare. Franks leave their lines, the sumpter beasts are yeah. Towards France the deuce, all on their way repair. Charles the Great, that land of Spain, had wasted. Her castles tain, her cities violated. Then said the king, his war was now abated. Towards Deuce France that emperor has hasted, Upon a lance Rolant his ensign raised, High on a cliff against the sky it was placed, The Franks in camp through all that country baited, Cantered pagans through those wide valleys raced, Hauberks they wore, and sarks with iron plated, Swords to their sides were girt, their helms were laced, Lances made sharp, escutcheons newly painted, there in the mists beyond the peaks remained, The day of doom for a hundred thousand waited. God, what a grief! Franks know not what is fated. Passes the day, the darkness is grown deep. That emperor, rich Charles, lies asleep. Dreams that he stands in the great pass of seas. In his two hands his ashen spear he sees. Gawain's the count that spear from him doth seize. Brandishes it and twists it with such ease That flown into the sky the flinders seem. Charles sleeps on, nor wakens from his dream. And after this another vision saw, In France at Aix, in his chapelle once more, That his right arm an evil bear did gnaw. Out of Ardennes he saw a leopard stalk, His body dear did savagely assault. But then there dashed a harrier from the hall, Leaping in the air he sped to Charles' call. First the right ear of that grim bear he caught, And furiously the leopard next he fought. Of battle great the Franks then seemed to talk, Yet which might win they knew not in his thought. Charles sleeps on, nor wakens he for aught. Passes the night and opens the clear day, that emperor canters in brave array, Looks through the host often in every way. My lord's barons, at length doth Charles say, Ye see the pass along these valleys straight, Judge for me now, who shall in rearward wait. There's my good son Rollins, then answers Gawains, You've no baron whose valour is as great. When the king hears, he looks upon him straight, And says to him, you devil incarnate, into your heart is come a mortal hate, And who shall go before me in the gate? Ogre is here, of Denmark, answers Gawains. You've no baron were better in that place. The Count Rollins hath heard himself decreed, Speaks then to Gawains by rule of courtesy. Good father, sir, I ought to hold you dear, Since the rearward you have for me decreed. Charles the king will never lose by me, as I know well, nor charger nor palfrey, 
Jennet nor mule that canter can with speed, Nor sumpter horse will lose, nor any steed, But my sword's point shall first exact their meed. Answers him Gawains, I know, tis true indeed. When Rolant heard that he should be rearwarden, furiously he spoke to his good father. Aha, culvert, begotten of a bastard, thinkest the glove will slip from me hereafter, as then from thee the wand fell before Charles. Right emperor, says the baron Rolands, give me the bow you carry in your hand. Ne'er in reproach I know will any man say that it fell and lay upon the land, as Gawain's let fall when he received the wand. That emperor with lowered front doth stand, he tugs his beard, his chin is in his hand. Tears fill his eyes, he cannot them command. And after that is come Duke Neem's firth. Better vassal there was not upon earth. Says to the king, Right well now have you heard, The Count Rolands to bitter wrath is stirred, For that on him the rearward is conferred. No baron else have you would do that work. Give him the bow your hands have bent at first. Then find him men, his company are worth. Gives it the king, and Roland bears it firth. That emperor Rolands then calleth he, Fair nephew mine, know this in verity, Half of my host I leave you presently, Retain you them, your safeguard this shall be. Then says the count, I will not have them me, Confound me, God, if I fail in the deed, Good valiant Franks, a thousand score I'll keep, Go through the pass in all security, While I'm alive, there's no man you need fear. The Count Rolands has mounted his charger, Beside him came his comrade Oliver, Also Gerin and the proud Count Gerier, And Otis came, and also Berengier, Old Anse and Sanson too came there, Gerard also of Roncillon the Fierce, And there is come the Gascon Gillier, Now by my head I'll go, the Archbishop swears, And I'm with you, says the Count Gaultier, I'm Rolant's man, I may not leave him there. A thousand score they choose of Chevalier. Gautel de whom he calls, that Count Rolands, A thousand francs take out of France our land, Dispose them so among ravines and crags, That the Emperor lose not a single man. Gautel replies, I'll do as you command. A thousand francs come out of France their land, At Galter's word they scour ravines and crags. They'll not come down, however the news be bad, Ere from their sheaths sword seven hundred flash. King Almeri, Belcern for kingdom had, On the evil day he met them in combat. High are the peaks, the valleys shadowful, Swarthy the rocks, the narrows wonderful. Franks passed that day all very sorrowful. Fifteen leagues round the rumour of them grew. When they were come and Terra Major knew, Saw Gascony their land and their seigneurs, Remembering their fiefs and their honours, Their little maids, their gentle wives and true. There was not one that shed not tears for rue. Beyond the rest Charles was of anguish full. In Spanish pass he'd left his dear nephew. Pity him seized. He could but weep for rue. The dozen peers are left behind in Spain. Franks in their band a thousand score remain. No fear have these, death hold they in disdain. That emperor goes into France apace. Under his cloak he fain would hide his face. Up to his side comes cantering Duke Nimes, Says to the king, What grief upon you weighs? Charles answers him, He's wrong that question makes, so great my grief I cannot but complain. France is destroyed by the device of Gawain. This night I saw by an angel's vision plain, between my hands he break my spear in twain. Great fear I have, since Rolant must remain, I've left him there upon a border strange. God, if he's lost, I'll not outlive that shame." Charles the Great he cannot but deplore, 
and with him Franks an hundred thousand mourn, who for Rolands have marvellous remorse. The felon Gawains had treacherously wrought, from pagan kin has had his rich reward, silver and gold and veils and silken cloths, camels, lions with many a mule and horse. Barons from Spain King Marsilies hath called, counts and viscounts and dukes and alma corps, and the admirals and cadets nobly born. Within three days come hundreds thousands four. In Saragoose they sound the drums of war. Mahum they raise upon their highest tower. Pagan is none that does not him adore. They canter then with great contention, through certain land, valleys and mountains, on, till of the Franks they see the gonfalons, being in rearward those dozen companions. They will not fail battle to do anon. Marcille's nephew is come before the bound, Riding a mule, he goads it with a wand, Smiling and clear, his uncle's ear demands, Fair lord and king, since, in your service glad, I have endured sorrow and sufferance, Have fought in field, and victories have had, Give me a fee, the right to smite Rolands, I'll slay him clean with my good trenchant lance, If Mahomet will be my sure warrant. Spain I'll set free, deliver all her land, From pass of Asper even unto Durastant. Charles will grow faint and recreant the Franks, There'll be no war while you're a living man. Marsili gives the glove into his hand. Marsile's nephew, holding in hand the glove, His uncle calls, with reason proud enough, Fair lord and king, great gift from you I've won. Choose now for me eleven more barons, So I may fight those dozen companions. First before all their answers fall for un. Brother he was to King Marsilion. Fair sir nephew, go you and I at once, Then verily this battle shall be done. The rearward of the great host of Carlon, It is decreed we deal them now their doom. King Corsabli is come from the other part, Barbarian and steeped in evil art. He's spoken then as fits a good vassal, For all God's gold he would not seem coward. Hastes into view Malprimi of Brigal, Faster than a horse upon his feet he can dart, Before Marsile he cries with all his heart, My body I will show at Ronceval, Find I Rolands, I'll slay him without fault. An admiral is there of Balaget, clear face and proud, and body nobly bred. Since first he was upon his horse mounted, his arms to bear has shown great lusty head. In vassalage he is well famous, said. Christian were he, he'd shown good baronhead. Before Marsile aloud has he shouted, To Ronceval my body shall be led. Find I, Rolands, then is he surely dead, and Oliver and all the other twelve. Franks shall be slain in grief and wretchedness. Charles the Great is old now and doted. Weary will be, and make no more war again. Spain shall be ours in peace and quietness. King Marsilies has heard, and thanks him well. An alma corps is there of Morien, More felon none in all the land of Spain. Before Marsile his vaunting boast hath made, To Ronceval my company I'll take, A thousand score with shields and lances brave, Find I, Rolands, with death I'll him acquaint, Day shall not dawn, but Charles will make his plaint. From the other part, Turges of Turtleloes, He was a count, that city was his own, Christians he would the massacre every one, before Marsile among the rest is gone, says to the king, Let not dismay be shown, Mahum's more worth than St. Peter of Rome, Serve we him well, then fame in field will own. To Ronceval, to meet Rolands I'll go, From death he'll find his warranty in none. See here my sword that is both good and long, With Durandal I'll lay it well across. You'll hear betimes to which the prize is gone, Franks shall be slain whom we descend upon, Charles the Old will suffer grief and wrong, 
no more on earth his crown will he put on. From the other part, Escrimez of Valtren, a Sarazin, that land was his as well. Before Marseille he cries amid the press, To Ronceval I'll go, pride to make less. Find I, Rolands, will not bear fence his head, Nor Oliver that hath the others led. The dozen peers condemned are to death. Franks shall be slain, and France lie deserted. Of good vassals will Charles be richly bled. From the other part, a pagan Esturgans, Estramariz also, was his comrade. Felons were these, and traitors miscreant. Then said Marsile, My lords before me stand, Into the pass you'll go to Ronceval. Give me your aid, and thither lead my band. They answer him, Sire, even as you command, We will assault Olivier and Rolant, The dozen peers from death have no warrant. For these our swords are trusty and trenchant. In scalding blood will dye their blades scarlet. Franks shall be slain, and Charles be right sad. Terror major will give into your hand. Come there, Sir King, truly you'll see all that. Yea, the Emperor will give into your hand. Running there came Marguerite of Sibylle, Who holds the land by Cadiz to the sea. For his beauty the ladies hold him dear. Who looks on him, with him her heart is pleased. When she beholds, she can but smile for glee. Was no pagan of such high chivalry. Come through the press, above them all, cries he. Be not at all dismayed, King Marsili, To Ronceval I'll go, and Roland's he, Nor Oliver may escape alive from me. The dozen peers are doomed to martyry. See here the sword, whose hilt is gold indeed, I got in gift from the admiral of primes. In scarlet blood I pledge it shall be steeped. Franks shall be slain, and France abased be. To Charles the old, with his great blossoming beard, Day shall not dawn, but brings him rage and grief. Ere a year pass, all France we shall have seized, Till we can lie in the burg of Saint Denise. The pagan king has bowed his head down deep. From the other part, Chamubles of Mune Grey, Right to the ground, his hair swept either way. He for a jest would bear a heavier weight Than four yoked mules beneath their load that strain. That land he had, God's curse on it was plain. No sun shone there, nor grew there any grain. No dew fell there, nor any shower of rain. The very stones were black upon that plain, And many say that devils there remain. Says Chamubles, my sword is in its place, At Ronceval scarlet I will it stain. Find I, Rolands, the proud upon my way, I'll fall on him, or trust me not again. At Durandal I'll conquer with this blade, Franks shall be slain, and France a desert made. The dozen peers are at this word away, Five score thousand of Sarazens they take, Who keenly press, and on to battle haste. In a firwood their gear they ready make. Ready they make hauberk Sarazenes, That folded are the greater part in three. And they lace on good helms Saragusses, Gird on their swords of tried steel Viennese, Fine shields they have, and spears Valentines, And white, blue, red, the ensigns take the breeze. They've left their mules behind in their palfreys, their charges mount, and canter knee by knee. Fair shines the sun, the day is bright and clear. Light bums again from all their polished gear. A thousand horns they sound, more proud to seem. Great is the noise, the Franks its echo hear. Says Oliver, Companion, I believe, Sarazans now in battle must we meet. Answers Rolands, God grant us then the fee, For our king's sake well must we quit us here. Man for his lord should suffer great disease, Most bitter cold endure and burning heat. His hair and skin should offer up at need. Now must we each lay on most hardily, So evil songs near sung of us shall be. Pagans are wrong, Christians are right indeed. Evil example will never come of me. Oliver mounts upon a lofty peak, Looks to his right along the valley green, 
the pagan tribes approaching there appear he calls rolands his companion to see what sound is this come out of spain we hear what hauberks bright what helmets these that gleam they'll smite our franks with fury past belief he knew it guaines the traitor and the thief who chose us out before the king our chief answers the count rolands olivier cease that man is my good father hold thy peace upon a peak is oliver mounted kingdom of spain he sees before him spread and sarazans so many gathered their helmets gleam with gaul are jewelled also their shields their hauberks are freed also their swords on signs on spears fixed rank beyond rank could not be numbered so many there no measure could he set in his own heart he saw astonished fast as he could down from the peak hath sped comes to the franks to them his tale hath said says oliver pagans from there i saw never on earth did any man see more gainst us their shields an hundred thousand bore that laced helms and shining hauberks wore and bolt upright their bright brown spearheads shone battle will have as never was before lords of the franks god keep you in valor so hold your ground we be not overborne then say the franks shame take him that goes off if we must die then perish one and all says oliver pagans in force abound while of us franks but very few i count comrade rolands your horn i pray you sound if charles here he'll turn his armies round answers rolands a fool i should be found in france the deuce would perish my renown with durandal i'll lay on thick and stout in blood the blade to its golden hilt i'll drown felon pagans to the pass shall not come down i pledge you now to death they all are bound comrade rolands sound the oliphant i pray if Charles hear, the host will turn again. Will succour us our king and baronage. Answers Rolands, Never, by God, I say, For my misdeeds shall kinsmen hear the blame, Nor France nor Deuce fall into evil fame. Rather stout blows with Durandal I'll lay, With my good sword that by my side doth sway. Till bloodied o'er you shall behold the blade. Felon pagans are gathered to their shame. I pledge you now to death they're doomed to-day. Comrade Rolands, once sound your oliphant. If Charles here, where in the pass he stands, I pledge you now they'll turn again the Franks. Never, by God, then answers him Rolands, shall it be said by any living man that for pagans I took my horn in hand. Never by me shall men reproach my clan when I am come into the battle grand, and blows lay on by hundred by thousand of Durandal bloodied, you'll see the brand. Franks are good men. Like vassals brave they'll stand. Nay, Spanish men from death have no warrant. Says Oliver, In this I see no blame. I have beheld the Sarazans of Spain, Covered with them the mountains and the vales, The wastes I saw, and all the farthest plains. A muster great they've made, this people strange. We have of men a very little tale answers rolands my anger is inflamed never please god his angels and his saints never by me shall frankish valour fail rather i'll die than shame shall me attain therefore strike on the emperor's love to gain pride hath rolands wisdom olivia hath and both of them show marvellous courage once they are horsed once they have donned their arms rather they die than from the battle pass good are the counts and lofty their language felon pagans come cantering in their wrath says oliver behold and see rolands these are right near but charles is very far on the oliphant deign now to sound a blast were the king here we should not fear damage only look up towards the pass of asper in sorrow there you'll see the whole rearward who does this deed does no more afterward 
answers Rolands, Utter not such outrage, evil his heart that is in thought coward. We shall remain firm in our place installed, from us the blows shall come, from us the assault. End of verses 39 to 87. Verses 88 to 138 of The Song of Roland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Joy Chan. The Song of Roland. Anonymous. Translated by Charles Kenneth Scott Moncrief. Verses 88 to 138. When Rolant sees that now must be combat, more fierce he's found than lion or leopard. The Franks he calls, and Oliver commands, Now say no more, my friends, nor thou, comrade, that emperor who left us Franks on guard, a thousand score stout men he set apart, and well he knows not one will prove coward. Man for his lord should suffer with good heart, of bitter cold and great heat bear the smart. His blood let drain, and all his flesh be scarred. Strike with thy lance, and I with Durandal, with my good sword that was the king's reward. So if I die, who has it afterward, noble vassals he well may say it was. From the other part is the Archbishop Turpin. He pricks his horse and mounts upon a hill. Calling the Franks, sermon to them begins. My lords barons, Charles left us here for this. He is our king. Well may we die for him. To Christendom good service offering. Battle you'll have, you all are bound to it, for with your eyes you see the Saracens. Pray for God's grace, confessing him your sins. For your soul's health I'll absolution give. So though you die, blessed martyrs shall you live. Thrones you shall win in the great paradis. The Franks dismount, upon the ground are lit. That archbishop God's benediction gives. For their penance, good blows to strike he bids. The Franks arise and stand upon their feet. They're well absolved, and from their sins made clean. And the archbishop has signed them with God's seal. And next they mount upon their charges keen. By rule of knights they have put on their gear, For battle or apparelled as is meet. The Count Rollant calls Oliver and speaks. Comrade and friend, now clearly have you seen That Gwenolen hath got us by deceit. Gold hath he ta'en, much wealth is his to keep. That emperor vengeance for us must wreak. King Mastilis hath bargained for us cheap. At the sword's point he yet shall pay our meed. To Spanish pass is Rollant's now going, on Valentif, his good steed, galloping. He is well armed, pride is in his bearing. He goes, so brave, his spear in hand holding. He goes, its point against the sky turning. A gonfalon all white thereon he's pinned. Down to his hand flutters the golden fringe. Noble his limbs, his face clear and smiling. His companion goes after, following. The men of France their warrant find in him. Proudly he looks towards the Saracens, and to the Franks sweetly, himself humbling, and courteously has said to them this thing. My lords barons, go now your pace holding, pagans are come great martyrdom seeking. Noble and fair reward this day shall bring, was never won by any Frankish king. Upon these words the hosts are come touching. Speaks Oliver, no more now will I say, your oliphant, to sound it do not deign, since from Calun you'll never more have aid. He has not heard, nor fault of his so brave. Those with him there are never to be blamed, so canter on with what prowess you may. Lords and barons, firmly your ground maintain. Be minded well, I pray you, in God's name. Stout blows to strike, to give as you shall take. Forget the cry of Charles we never may. Upon this word... The Franks cry out amain, who then had heard them all Montjoy acclaim. Our vassalage might well recall the tale. 
They canter forth, God, with what proud parade, Pricking their spurs, the better speed to gain. They go to strike, what other thing could they? But Saracens are not at all afraid. Pagans and Franks, you'd see them now engaged. Marcille's nephew, his name is Aelroth, First of them all canters before the host, Says of our Franks these ill words as he goes, Felons of France, so here on us you close, Betrayed you has he that to your guard you ought, Mad is the king who left you in this post, So shall the fame of France the deuce be lost, And the right arm from Charles' body torn. When Roland hears what rage he has by God, his steed he spurs, gallops with great effort. He goes, that count, to strike with all his force. The shield he breaks, the hauberk seam unsews, Slices the heart, and shatters up the bones. All of the spine he severs with that blow, And with his spear the soul from body throws. So well he's pinned, he shakes in the air that course, On his spear's hilt he's flung it from the horse. So in two halves Aeroth's neck he broke nor left him yet, they say, but rather spoke. Avant, Calver, a madman Charles is not. No treachery was ever in his thought. Proudly he did, who left us in this post. The fame of France the deuce shall not be lost. Strike on the Franks, ours are the foremost blows. For we are right, but these gluttons are wrong. A duke there was, his name was Falfaran. Brother was he to King Marsilian. He held their land, Dathan's and Abiran's. Beneath the sky no more in crime fell un. Between his eyes so broad was he in front, A great half-foot you'd measure there in full. His nephew dead he's seen with grief enough, Comes through the press and wildly forth he runs. Aloud he shouts their cry the pagans use, And to the Franks is right contrarious. Honour of France the deuce shall fail to us. Here's Oliver, He's very furious. His horse he pricks with both his golden spurs, And goes to strike, even as a baron doth. The shield he breaks, and through the hauberk cuts, His ensign's fringe into the carcass thrusts. On his spear's hilt he's flung it dead in dust, Looks on the ground, sees glutton lying thus, And says to him, with reason proud enough, From threatening, Calvert, your mouth I've shut, Strike on the Franks! Right well will overcome. Monjoy, he shouts, T'was the ensign of Carlan. A king there was, His name was Corsabli, Barbarian, And of a strange country. He's called aloud To the other Saracens. Well may we join battle Upon this field, For of the Franks But very few are here, And those are here We should account them cheap. For Charles not one has any warranty. This is the day when they their death shall meet. Has heard him well that Archbishop Turpin. No man he'd hate so much the sky beneath. Spurs of fine gold he pricks into his steed. To strike that king by virtue great goes he. The hauberk all unfastens, breaks the shield, Thrusts his great spear in through the carcass clean. Pins it so well he shakes it in its seat. Dead in the road he's flung it from his spear. Looks on the ground that glutton lying sees, Nor leaves him yet, they say, but rather speaks. Colver pagan, you lied now in your teeth. Charles, my lord, our warrant is indeed. None of our Franks hath any mind to flee. Your companions all on this spot will keep. I tell you news, death shall ye suffer here. Strike on the Franks, fail none of you at need. Ours the first blow, to God the glory be. Monjoy, he cries, for all the camp to hear. And Gerin strikes Malpremy of Brigal, so his good shield is nothing worth at all. Shatters the boss, was fashioned of crystal. One half of it downward to earth flies off. Right to the flesh has through his hauberk torn. On his good spear he has the carcass caught. And with one blow that pagan downward falls, The soul of him Satan away hath borne. And his comrade Gerez strikes the admiral, 
the shield he breaks, the hauberk unmetals, and his good spear drives into his vitals. So well he's pinned him, clean through the carcass, dead on the field he's flung from his hand, says Oliver, now is our battle grand. Sans and the duke go strike that almacor, the shield he breaks with golden flowers tooled. That good hauberk for him is nothing proof. He sliced the heart, the lungs and liver through, and flung him dead, as well or ill may prove. Says the archbishop, a barren stroke in truth. And Ansay has let his charger run. He goes to strike Turgis of Turtilus. The shield he breaks, its golden boss above. The hauberk too its doubled mail undoes. His good spear's point into the carcass runs. So well he's thrust, clean through the whole steel comes, and from the hilt he's thrown him dead in dust. Then says Roland, Great prowess in that thrust. And Engelers, the Gascoigne of Fidel, spurs on his horse, lets fall the reins as well. He goes to strike Escremis of Valtrain. The shield he breaks and shatters on his neck. The hauberk, too, he has its chin-guard rent. Between the armpits has pierced him through the breast. On his spear's hilt from saddle throws him dead. After he says, So are you turned to hell. And Otis strikes a pagan estorgant Upon the shield, before its leathern band, Slices it through, the white with the scarlet. The hauberk too has torn its folds apart, and his good spear thrusts clean through the carcass, and flings it dead, even as the horse goes past. He says, You have no warrant afterward. And Beringer, he strikes Estramaris. The shield he breaks, the hauberk tears and splits, thrusts his stout spear through his middle, and him flings, down dead among a thousand Sarazines. Of their dozen peers ten have now been killed, no more than two remain alive and quick, being Chernobyl and the Count Marguerite. Marguerite is a very gallant knight, both fair and strong, and swift he is and light. He spurs his horse, goes Oliver to strike, and breaks his shield by the golden buckle bright. Along his ribs the pagan spear doth glide, God's his warrant, his body has respite. The shaft breaks off, Oliver stays upright. That other goes, nought stays him in his flight. His trumpet sounds, rallies his tribe to fight. Common the fight is now, and marvellous. The Count Rollins no way himself secures, strikes with his spear, long as the shaft endures. By fifteen blows it is clean broken through. Then Durandal he bears, his sabre good, spurs on his horse, is gone to strike Chamubal. The helmet breaks, where bright carbuncles grew, slices the cap and shears the locks in two, slices also the eyes and the features, the hauberk white, whose mail was close of woof. Down to the groin cuts all his body through, to the saddle, with beaten gold t'was tooled. Upon the horse that sword a moment stood, then sliced its spine, no join there any knew. Dead in the field among thick grass them threw. After, he said, Culvert, false step you moved. From a hermit your help will not come soon. No victory for gluttons such as you. The Count Rollins, he canters through the field, Holds Durandal, he well can thrust and wield. Right great damage he's done the Sarazines, You'd seen them, one on other, dead in heaps. Through all that place their blood was flowing clear. In blood his arms were, and his hauberk steeped, And bloodied o'er, shoulders and neck, his steed. And Oliver goes on to strike with speed. No blame that way deserve the dozen peers, For all the Franks they strike and slay with heat. Pagans are slain, some swoon there in their seats. Says the archbishop, Good baronage indeed! Monjoy, he cries, the call of Charles repeats. And Oliver has cantered through the crush, Broken his spear, the truncheon still he thrusts. 
going to strike a pagan Malsoran. Flowers and gold are on the shield he cuts. Out of the head both the two eyes have burst, and all the brains are fallen in the dust. He flings him dead, seven hundred else amongst. Then has he slain Turgeon and Estragus. Right to the hilt, his spear in flinders flew. Then says Rolant, Companion, what do you? In such a fight there's little strength in wood. Iron and steel should here their valour prove. Where's your sword, that halter clair I knew? Golden its hilt, whereon a crystal grew. Says Oliver, I had not, if I drew, time left to strike enough good blows and true. Then Oliver has drawn his mighty sword, as his comrade had bidden and implored. In knightly wise the blade to him was showed, just in his strikes, that iron valley's lord. All of his head has down the middle shorn, the carcass sliced, the broidered sark has torn, the good saddle that was with old adorned, and through the spine has sliced that pagan's horse. Dead in the field before his feet they fall, says Roland, now my brother I you call, he'll love us for such blows, our emperor. On every side, bon joy, you'd hear them roar. That Count Gerin sate on his horse sorrel, on passeur was Gerin there his friend. They've loosed their reins, together spurred and sped, and go to strike a pagan Timozel. One on the shield, on hauberk the other fell, and their two spears went through the carcass well. A fallow field amidst they've thrown him dead. I do not know, I never heard it said, which of the two were nimbler as they went. Esperavi was there, son of Borrel, and him there slew Angulars of Burdell, and the archbishop, he slew them Siglorel, the enchanter, who before had been in hell, where Jupiter bore him by a magic spell. Then Turpin says, To us he's forfeited. Answers Rolands, The culvert is bested. Such blows, brother Olivier, I like well. The battle grows more hard and harder yet, Franks and pagans with marvellous onset, Each other strike and each himself defends. So many shafts blood-stained and shattered, So many flags and ensigns tattered, So many Franks lose their young lusty head, Who'll see no more their mothers nor their friends, Nor hosts of France that in the pass attend. Charles the Great weeps therefore with regret, what profits that? No succour shall they get. Evil service that day, Gawain's rendered them, To Saragus going, his own to sell. After he lost his members and his head, In court at Aix to gallows tree condemned, And thirty more with him, of his own kindred, Were hanged, a thing they never did expect. Now marvellous and weighty the combat, Right well they strike, Olivier and Rolant. A thousand blows come from the archbishop's hand, the dozen peers are nothing short of that, with one accord join battle all the Franks. Pagans are slain by hundred, by thousand, who flies not then, from death has no warrant, will he or nil, foregoes the allotted span. The Franks have lost the foremost of their band, they'll see no more their fathers nor their clans, nor Charlemagne, where in the pass he stands. Torment arose, right marvellous in France. Tempest there was of wind and thunder black. With rain and hail, so much could not be spanned. Fell thunderbolts often on every hand. And verily the earth quaked in answer back, From St. Michael of Peril unto Sands, From Bessencun to the harbour of Guitsand. No house stood there but straight its walls must crack. In full midday the darkness was so grand, Save the sky split, no light was in the land, Beheld these things with terror every man. And many said, We in the judgment stand, The end of time is presently at hand. They spake no truth, they did not understand. T'was the great day of mourning for Roland. The Franks strike on, their hearts are good and stout. Pagans are slain, a thousandfold, in crowds. 
left of five score are not two thousands now says the archbishop our men are very proud no man on earth has more nor better found in chronicles of franks is written down what vassalage he had our emperor then through the field they go their friends seek out and their eyes weep with grief and pain profound for kinsmen dear by hearty friendship bound King Marsilies and his great host draw round. King Marsilies along a valley led the mighty host that he had gathered. Twenty columns that king had numbered, with gleaming gold their helms were jewelled, shone too their shields and sarks embroidered, sounded the charge seven thousand trumpets, great was the noise through all that country went. Then said Roland's, Olivier, brother, friend, that felon Gawains hath sworn to achieve our death, for his treason no longer is secret. Right great vengeance our emperor will get, battle will have, both long and keenly set. Never has man beheld such armies met. With Durandal my sword I'll strike again, and comrade, you shall strike with Halter Clare. These swords and lands so many have we held, battles with them so many brought to end, no evil song shall e'er be sung or said. When the Franks see so many there, pagans, on every side covering all the land, often they call Olivia and Roland, the dozen peers to be their safe warrant, and the archbishop speaks to them as he can. My lords barons, go thinking nothing bad, for God, I pray you, fly not hence, but stand, lest evil songs of our valour men chant. Far better twere to perish in the van. Certain it is our end is near at hand. Beyond this day shall no more live one man. But of one thing I give you good warrant. Blessed paradise to you now open stands. By the innocence your thrones you there shall have. Upon these words grow bold again the Franks. There is not one but he, Monjoy, demands. A Sarrazin was there of Saragoose, of that city one half was his by use. Twas Climberin's a man with nothing proof. By Gwenolen the Count an oath he took, and kissed his mouth in amity and truth, gave him his sword and his carbuncle too. Terra major, he said, to shame he'd put. From the emperor his crown he would remove. He sate his horse, which he called Babamush. Never so swift sparrow nor swallow flew. He spurred him well, and down the reins he threw, going to strike Angelier of Gascoon. Nor shield nor sark him any warrant proved. The pagan spear's point did his body wound. He pinned him well, and all the steel went through. From the hilt flung him dead beneath his foot. After, he said, Good are they to confuse. Pagans, strike on, and so this press set loose. God, say the Franks, grief such a man to lose. The Count Rollins called upon Oliver. Sir Companion, dead now is Angela, than whom we'd no more valiant chevalier answered that count. God, let me him avenge! Spurs of fine gold into his horse drove then, held halter clare with blood its steel was red, by virtue great to strike that pagan went, brandished his blade, the Sarrazin upset, the adversaries of God his soul bear thence. Next he has slain the Duke Alfein, and sliced away Escababi his head, and has unhorsed some seven Arabs else. No good for those to go to war again. Then said Rollanz, My comrade shows anger, So in my sight he makes me prize him well. More dear by Charles for such blows are we held. Aloud he's cried, Strike on the chevalier! From the other part a pagan Valdebron, Warden he'd been to King Marsilion, and lord by sea of four hundred dromons, no sailor was but called his name upon. 
Jerusalem he'd taken by treason, violated the temple of Salomon, the patriarch had slain before the fonts, he'd pledged his oath by county Grenelon, gave him his sword, a thousand coins thereon. He sate his horse, which he called Gremimond, never so swift flew in the air Falcon, he's pricked him well, with sharp spurs he had on, going to strike in that rich duke Sanson. His shield has split, his hauberk has undone, the ensign's folds have through his body gone. Dead from the hilt, out of his seat he's dropped. Pagans strike on, for well will overcome. God, say the Franks, grief for a brave baron. The Count Rollins, when Sanson dead he saw, you may believe great grief he had therefore. His horse he spurs, gallops with great effort, wields Durandal, was worth fine gold and more, goes as he may to strike that baron bold, above the helm that was embossed with gold, slices the head, the sark and all the course, the good saddle that was embossed with gold, he cuts deep through the backbone of his horse. He slain them both, blame him for that, O Lord. The pagans say, "'Twas hard on us that blow." Answers Rollanz, "'Nay, love you I cannot, for on your side is arrogance and wrong.'" Out of Afrique an African was come. T'was Malkiant, the son of King Malkud. The beaten gold was all his armour done, for all men's else it shone beneath the sun. He sate his horse, which he called Salt Perdut, never so swift was any beast could run. And unsay upon the shield he struck, the scarlet with the blue he sliced it up, of his hauberk he's torn the folds and cut, the steel and stock has through his body thrust. Dead is that count, he's no more time to run. Then say the Franks, Baron, an evil luck. Swift through the field Turpin the archbishop passed. Such shaven crown has never else sung mass, who with his limbs such prowess might compass. To the pagan said, God send thee all that's bad, one thou hast slain for whom my heart is sad. So his good horse forth at his bidding ran. He struck him then on his shield Toledan, until he flings him dead on the green grass. From the other part was a pagan Grandones, son of Capuel, the king of Cappadoce. He sate his horse, the which he called Mamor. Never so swift was any bird in course. He's loosed the reins, and spurring on that horse, he's gone to strike Geran with all his force. The scarlet shield from his neck he's broken off, and all his sark thereafter has he torn. The ensign blew clean through his body's gone, until he flings him dead on a high rock. His companion Gerard he's slain also, and Beringer and Guillaume of Santone. Next a rich duke he's gone to strike, or store, that held Valance and the honour of the Rhone. He's flung him dead, great joy the pagans show. Then say the Franks, of ours how many fall. The Count Rollanz, his sword with blood is stained. Well has he heard what way the Franks complained. Such grief he has, his heart would split in twain. To the pagan says, God send thee every shame. One hast thou slain that dearly thou'lt repay. He spurs his horse that on with speed doth strain, which should forfeit they both together came. Grandoni was both proof and valiant, and virtuous a vassal combatant. Upon the way there he has met Rolant. He'd never seen, yet knew him at a glance, by the proud face and those fine limbs he had, by his regard and by his countenance. He could not help, but he grew faint thereat. He would escape, nothing avail he can. Struck him the count with so great virtue that, to the nose-plate he's all the helmet cracked. Sliced through the nose and mouth and teeth he has, Hauberk close-mailed, and all the whole carcass, saddle of gold, with plates of silver flanked, 
and of his horse has deeply scarred the back. He's slain them both, they'll make no more attack. The Spanish men in sorrow cry, Alack! Then say the Franks, He strikes well, our warrant. Marvellous is the battle in its speed, The Franks there strike with vigour and with heat, Cutting through wrists and ribs and shines indeed, Through garments to the lively flesh beneath. On the green grass the clear blood runs in streams. The pagans say, No more will suffer we. Terra Major, Mahomet's curse on thee. Beyond all men thy people are hardy. There was not one but cried then, Masili, canter, O king, thy succour now we need. Marvellous is the battle now and grand. The Franks there strike, their good brown spears in hand. Then had you seen such sorrowing of clans, So many a slain, shattered, and bleeding man, Biting the earth or piled there on their backs, The Saracens cannot such loss withstand, Will they or nil, from off the field draw back, By lively force chase them away the Franks. Their martyrdom, his men's, Marseil has seen, So he bids sound his horns and his bucines, then canters forth with all his great army, canters before Sarazin Abysme. More felon none was in that company, cankered with guile and every felony. He fears not God, the son of St. Mary. Black is that man, as molten pitch that seethes. Better he loves murder and treachery than to have all the gold of Galicy. Never has man behold him sport for glee, yet vassalage he's shown, and great folly. So is he dear to the felon king Marseille, dragon he bears, to which his tribe rally. That archbishop could never love him, he, seeing him there to strike he's very keen. Within himself he says all quietly, This Sarazin great heretic me seems, rather I'll die than not slay him clean. Neer did I love coward nor cowardice. That archbishop begins the fight again, sitting the horse which he took from Grosset, that was a king he had in Denmark slain. That charger is swift and of noble race, fine are his hooves, his legs are smooth and straight. Short are his thighs, broad crouper he displays, long are his ribs, aloft his spine is raised, white is his tail and yellow is his mane, little his ears and tawny all his face. No beast is there can match him in a race. That archbishop spurs on by vassalage. He will not pause, ere abysme he assail. So strikes that shield, is wonderfully arrayed, Whereon are stones, amethyst and topaz, Asterminals and carbuncles that blaze. A devil's gift it was, in Valmetes, Who handed it to the admiral Galifes. So Turpin strikes, spares him not any way, after that blow he's worth no penny wage, the carcass he sliced, rib from rib away, so flings him down dead in an empty place. Then say the Franks, he has great vassalage with the archbishop, surely the cross is safe. The Count Roland calls upon Oliver, so companion, witness you'll freely bear, the archbishop is a right good chevalier, None better is neath heaven anywhere. Well can he strike with lance and well with spear. Answers that count. Support to him will bear. Upon that word the Franks again make yea. Hard are the blows, slaughter and suffering there, For Christians too, most bitter grief and care. Who could had seen Rolands and Oliver With their good swords to strike and to slaughter? And the archbishop lays on there with his spear, Those that are dead, Men well may hold them dear. In charters and in briefs is written clear, Four thousand fell, and more, the tales declare. Gainst four assaults easily did they fare, But then the fifth brought heavy griefs to bear. They all are slain, those Frankish chevaliers, Only three score, whom God was pleased to spare. Before these die, they'll sell them very dear. The Count Roland great loss of his men sees, 
his companion Olivier calls and speaks. Sir and comrade, in God's name that you keeps, such good vassals you see lie here in heaps, for France the douce, fair country may we weep, of such barons long desolate she'll be. Ah, king and friend, wherefore are you not here? O oh, Oliver, brother, can we achieve? And by what means our news to him repeat? Says Oliver, I know not how to seek. Rather I die than shame come of this feat. Then says Rolands, I'll win this Oliphant, if Charles here, where in the pass he stands, I pledge you now they will return, the Franks. Says Oliver, Great shame would come of that, and a reproach on every one, your clan, that shall endure while each lives in the land. When I implored, you would not do this act. Doing it now, no raise from me you'll have. So wind your horn, but not by courage rash, seeing that both your arms with blood are splashed. Answers that count. Fine blows I've struck them back. Then says Rolant, Strong it is now, our battle. I'll wind my horn so the king hears it, Charles. Says Oliver, that act were not a vassal's. When I implored you, comrade, you were wrathful. Were the king here, we had not borne such damage, nor should we blame those with him there, his army. Says Oliver, Now by my beard hereafter, if I may see my gentle sister Ald, she in her arms, I swear, shall never clasp you. Then says Rolands, Wherefore so wroth with me? He answers him, Comrade, it was your deed. Vassalage comes by sense and not folly. Prudence more worth is than stupidity. Here are Franks dead, all for your trickery. No more service to Carlon may we yield. My lord were here now, had you trusted me, and fought and won this battle then had we, taken or slain were the king Marsili. In your prowess, Rolands, no good we've seen. Charles the Great in vain your aid will seek, none such as he till God his judgment speak. Here must you die, and France in shame be steeped. Here perishes our loyal company, before this night great severance and grief. That archbishop has heard them, how they spoke. His horse he pricks with his fine spurs of gold. Coming to them he takes up his reproach. Sir Oliver, and you, Sir Roland, both, for God, I pray, do not each other scold. No help it were to us the horn to blow, but, none the less, it may be better so. The king will come, with vengeance that he owes, these Spanish men never away shall go. Our Franks here, each descending from his horse, will find us dead, and limb from body torn. They'll take us hence on biers and litters borne, with pity and with grief for us they'll mourn. They'll bury each in some old minister close. No wolf, nor swine, nor dog shall gnaw our bones. Answers Roland, Sir, very well you spoke. Roland hath set the oliphant to his mouth. He grasps it well, and with great virtue sounds. High are those peaks, afar it rings and loud. Thirty great leagues they hear its echoes mount. So Charles heard, and all his comrades round, then said that king, Battle they do, our counts! And Gwenolen answered, Contrarius, That were a lie in any other mouth. The Count Rolands, with sorrow and with pangs, and with great pain, sounded his oliphant. Out of his mouth the clear blood leapt and ran, about his brain the very temples cracked. Loud is its voice, that horn he holds in hand. Charles hath heard, where in the pass he stands, and neems hears, and listens all the Franks. Then says the king, I hear his horn, Rolance. He'll never sound, but he were in combat. Answers him Gawains, It is no battle that. Now are you old, blossoming white and blanched, Yet by such words you still appear infant. You know full well the great pride of Rolant. Marvel it is, God stays so tolerant. Nobles he took, not waiting your command, 
Thence issued forth the Sarazins a band, with vassalage had fought against Roland. He slew them first with Durandal his brand, then washed their blood with water from the land, so what he'd done might not be seen of man. He for a hare goes all day, horn in hand, before his peers in foolish jest he brags. No race neath heaven and field him dare attack. So canter on. Nay, wherefore hold we back? Terra Major is far away, our land. The Count Rolands, though blood his mouth doth stain, and burst are both the temples of his brain, his oliphant he sounds with grief and pain. Charles hath heard, listen the Franks again. That horn, the king says, hath a mighty strain. Answers Duke Nimes, a baron blows with pain. Battle is there, indeed I see it plain. He is betrayed by one that still doth feign. Equip you, sir, cry out your old refrain, that noble band, go succour them amain. Enough you've heard how Rolant doth complain. That emperor hath bid them sound their horns. The Franks dismount and dress themselves for war. Put hauberks on, helmets and golden swords. Fine shields they have, and spears of length and force. Scarlet and blue and white their ensigns float. His charger mounts each baron of the host. They spur with haste as through the pass they go. Nor was there one, but thus to his neighbour spoke. Now ere he die, may we see Roland so. Ranged by his side, we'll give some goodly blows. But what avail, they've stayed too long below. That even tide is light as was the day, their armour shines beneath the sun's clear ray. Hauberks and helms throw off a dazzling flame, and blazoned shields flowered in bright array. Also their spears with golden ensigns gay, that emperor he canters on with rage, and all the Franks with wonder and dismay. There is not one can bitter tears restrain, and for Roland they're very sore afraid. The king has bid them seize that county Guane, and charged with him the scullions of his train. The master cook he's called, Bescun by name. Guard me him well, his felony is plain, who in my house vile treachery has made. He holds him, and a hundred others takes from the kitchen both good and evil knaves. Then Guane's beard and both his cheeks they shaved, and four blows each with their closed fists they gave. They trounced him well with cudgels and with staves, and on his neck they clasped an iron chain. So like a bear enchained they held him safe, on a pack-mule they set him in his shame, kept him till Charles should call for him again. High were the peaks, and shadowy and grand, the valleys deep, the rivers swiftly ran. Trumpets they blew in rear and in the van, till all again answered that oliphant, that emperor counters with fury mad, and all the Franks dismay and wonder have. There is not one but weeps and waxes sad, and all pray God that he will guard Roland, till in the field together they may stand. There by his side they'll strike as well they can. But what avail? No good there is in that. They're not in time. Too long have they held back. End of verses 88 to 138